Hello everyone, my name is Victor Fernandez. I am one of the international admissions counselors here at the University of Finlay. Today I'm joined by the Associate Professor of Environmental Safety Occupational Health Management Program and Department Chair, Dr. Murphy. Uh, and today he'll be speaking to you about the highlights of the program. Good afternoon, everyone, and welcome to the University of Finlay. In particular, welcome to the All Hazards Training Center. This is one of two training centers that we utilize in our academic programs here at the University of Finlay. As Victor had said, my name is Dr. Tim Murphy. I'm the department chair of the Environmental Safety and Occupational Health Programs. We have two programs. We have both a graduate program and an undergraduate program that focus on environmental safety and occupational health issues. The big difference between the two programs is that the undergraduate program focuses on those skills that you need to make sure your workplace is safe or the environment is safe. So they focus on the technical aspects and the scientific aspects. The graduate program, on the other hand, focuses on the management of those people who are the technical specialists. So as a graduate program alum, you would be expecting to go into business and be the manager of that group of health and safety people. I had mentioned that we're in the All Hazards Training Center. The center is used to train approximately 11,000 people per year across the United States, Canada, and Mexico. Many of those people are not trained here, but they're trained in their workplace or in their community. This facility here is used by students, both undergraduate and graduate students, to get hands-on training in the response to chemical incidents, truck turnovers, leaking tanks, uh, above ground tanks, uh, uh, emergency response to these chemical incidents. Um, over on this side, we actually have the confined space apparatus. A confined space is a space that you can get your entire body into. Uh, it's not made for you to work in on a daily basis, and it has some type of hazard. And so we teach students how to recognize what those hazards are, uh, think uh, mixing tanks, uh, think from the agricultural standpoint, grain elevators, manure pits, uh, utility vaults, all those things that work might have to be done in. So we teach them how to make sure that they're safe, that the workers are safe, and nobody gets injured. Um, our other training facility is our off-campus facility. It's outside of the city limits. Uh, there, in addition to rail cars uh, and doing transfer from rail cars to tanks and emergency response to a variety of scenarios, we also have a pond there that we do uh, environmental studies, limnology uh, experiments on. We have uh, underground water wells where we can do determination of groundwater flow, volume of groundwater, uh, determine how to treat groundwater that gets contaminated. So those are the different types of activities that we do at these two facilities. So in addition to the confined space apparatus, we have behind me what's called a portable decontamination unit. The idea of this is that people, citizens, who get contaminated from a chemical or biological release, whether it's by accident or on purpose, such as a terrorism event, can be decontaminated in this unit before they enter a hospital. If you enter a hospital and you, you are contaminated, you have sarin gas on your clothing, for an example, you are now bringing that contaminant into the hospital, contaminating the hospital workers and contaminating the emergency, the emergency center there at the hospital. So you need to get decontaminated before you enter into that facility. Um, the inflatable unit that you see behind me is utilized throughout the United States and throughout other countries. Uh, they're a very nice unit to have. It makes decontamination quite simple. In addition to these training facilities that I've been talking about, the Environmental Health and Safety Program also has several other hands-on laboratories. The first one is our ventilation lab. Ventilation is the study of the movement of air through a space. Have you ever been in a meeting or in a classroom where the air is stale and you feel like, oh, I really need to open up the window to get some fresh air? Well, that's because they're not circulating air often enough. In our ventilation lab, our students learn how to 
determine the size of ventilation units, the size of motors, how to put all that together and work with the engineers and the architects that design buildings and design classrooms and workplaces so that there's a better airflow. In particular, in a work environment where you're working with chemicals, you want to have a ventilation system that removes the chemicals from the workplace, treats them, and then exhausts them to the outside air so the workers don't get exposed. In addition, we have two other laboratories. One is our environmental sustainability lab where the students do extensive work on uh, water systems, water treatment, and just general environmental systems. And then the last lab is our uh, student and faculty research lab. It's a dedicated space that's only for the environmental health and safety students, both undergraduate and graduate, to do research with faculty members. Currently in that space, we are building two different experiments. Uh, the first one is to analyze the products of diesel exhaust um, and see how they react in sunlight. So we have an indoor smog chamber where we can put a gas into it, turn on the lights, and over a period of time, those lights mimic the sunlight and the chemical photo degrades or photo changes, and we can determine what those changes are, and therefore we can predict what type of pollution will come out of the use of different types of fuels. And then the next research project that we're doing is uh, on biodiesel, where we are taking waste food oil and turning that into a diesel uh, fuel that can be used by any type of diesel engine and that particular research is going to focus on teaching high school students about sustainability issues number one and number two uh, we want to see if we can determine what used food grade oil is better to make diesel fuel so if you like to learn more about this program and start a free application with us feel free to email us at international at finlay.edu or check our website at www.finley.edu uh, and we hope to hear from you very soon. See you guys!